So I wanted to ju jump back in and ask another question, um, kind of about the whole millenn millennials. And, and I, there's a question of do you, do, you, do you guys, as you know, younger people in the industry, do you face um, any kind of challenges in your respective fields because of senior leadership? Senior leadership, as we know, oftentimes baby boomers are in that kind of age demographic. So do you think there's any kind of like millennial stigma, so to speak, um, and do you have to kind of overcome that at all? Um, Love to hear what your, what your take is on that. I think for revenue management specifically, um, the field has really been dominated by former GMs, um, people, you can almost say like late 30s, early 40s mm -hmm. is kind of the career progression that it would take to get into that position. Um, with newer programs similar to what DePaul offers, I think that it's a great opportunity for other schools to kind of follow in the same line for people that do have that interest to ultimately get into a field like revenue management right. <coughs> where it's not as much you know because when you get general managers or former operations people they have a mindset where it's you know they think too much about the quality and not as much about the demand or the supply um, whereas here I think we learned a lot of that and that was really drilled in so going you know into the field um, people kind of look at you like, you know, do you really know what you're doing? Right. And sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But yeah, it's uh I wouldn't say that they look they look down by any means, right. but they just don't know if you really have the Well revenue management's a difficult I mean it's a very specific kind of focus, right? You have to be I mean I know there's there's um I've taken revenue management classes, I'm sure you have before. There's there, there's a lot of automation to it now, right? But you still have to have the know how. Mm -hmm. Um so I mean I, I'm assuming there are people who've the kind of who grew up doing it or grew into doing it, and they have their own their own set ways, and they probably think a new. Well, that's what I mean. There's, it's the kind of the younger people coming up. There's the, the kind of new guy or gal in town, and you know they they probably <laughs> they probably think that you're coming after their job, so to speak. So I, I just you know I, I yeah, wonder I if you encountered that. I think it has less to do with being a millennial and more to do with with, <laughs> with the training in the short amount of time versus the lifetime of training it took for them to get to that position. So yeah. it just so happens that I'm a millennial. Right. As well, which I think compounds it, but. Do you, is, there, is there that competition though? Do you see it from people who are maybe are above you and they might think that you're gunning for their position or anything, anything like that? Subconsciously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On their part. Yeah. Right. Have you guys ever encountered specific things that have happened to you in the workplace? Without saying names or anything, but like, you know, someone <laughs> where you might have not felt uncomfortable, but you just certainly felt like you were because you were younger, they were trying to kind of, you know. I wouldn't say it's like position based, but um, in my role, I'll present like new opportunities or something that right. I think could be a benefit. Um, but like the question that I'll get back is, okay, where's the proof? Like what proof do you have? Oh, it's something new, I don't know, I don't have any proof. We need to test it out. Um, so I'll see that, um, not really with my team, but a lot of like the hotels that I'll work with um, that have years and years of experience, they will always have more years of experience than I will have. Right. So I think they'll they'll use that a lot as a crutch. Well, like you know, I don't think it worked five years ago when we tried it the first time or something where I wasn't even around. Right. Um, so I think that's one of the challenges is you know how do we continue to grow and evolve in the industry and evolve our hotels if there is this kind of you know, I've been around, I've seen everything yeah. kind of attitude. How about with social media? I mean, when you talk about maybe a, you know, a VP, SVP who's older, um, what, 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 are the, what are their takes on social media? I mean, and, and is it like, they're like, oh great, there's Facebook, but you know, there's all these other, you know, Snapchat, whatever, Instagram, Insta as the kids are calling it, or whatever, maybe, um, the gram, I guess, I don't know exactly what it's called, <laughs> in so many ways. Yeah. But I mean, like, th those, and, and just bringing like younger ideas to the table, do you ever see, feel like they're kind of, they might poo-poo them because they're younger, fresher ideas? I mean, I think with social media, it's always so changing so quickly. Um, I think that's why I think the millennials who are using it on their own time, they understand it a little better because right. they have all these social medias and they know which things are kind of in right now and which things are out. And a lot of advertisements that I see kind of come across to me as older people trying to like connect with the youth. And that's just scary. And that's Weird. just <laughs> like the worst possible way that it could go because that just automatically turns people off to it. It seems like you're trying to connect with me but you're using this in the wrong way or right. you're not using this thing that millennials like in a way that's actually 
like genuine to millennials. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of using social media and things to try and connect with them, I think that's where millennials do come in. That, yeah. That's probably why um, like things like this are happening, where we're having a conversation about social media from a millennial point of view, because we are using it a little bit more. I think everyone kind of is using it. I have I think ever, yeah. Facebook, um, <laughs> but well, let me get specific with you because I like the fact <coughs> that you're saying you know what's in, what's out. So what is in, and what would you say is out? I mean, it's always changing. That's the thing. That's why it's hard. right now, right like a balance sheet. Right now, what is it? Um, as far as social media, what should what should hotel um, brands be kind of? Is it Snapchat? What what and how should they be using it? Um, actually, I really liked one thing Marriott did. They had um, like a Snapchat story, um, just following someone around. I think it was New York, where they mm -hmm. were just like kind of snapshotting what they were doing. It was very like, it seemed very authentic because it was just kind of a guest at the hotel showing you what she was doing. Right. Um, and of course, like Snapchat, it disappears after a certain amount of time. So it seemed very like real in the moment and kind of this is just genuine, like what a guest is doing and what a person is experiencing in the city instead of just showing advertisements. They weren't, and they weren't trying to sell the Marriott Marquis in New York. It was yeah, just it was basically just like just a- experience. So that's the way, you find that's the way brands should really kind of Use, utilize social media in that in that regard. I mean, I think telling a story is kind of like the best way to get someone to feel connected to you. Yeah. How do you guys feel about that? Yeah, I actually have some thoughts towards that. Um, this is my personal opinion, but I feel like um, many hotel brands and other hospitality brands would do well to market themselves more so as a lifestyle brand, mm -hmm. where millennials could kind of connect that if this is where I am in my life, this is how I'm living, I should be able to incorporate this brand into my lifestyle. So um, yeah, it's kind of a thought because like you said, the stories are really in. People want to see what you're doing right now in this instant and not have to worry about it tomorrow. But if they see someone they look up to, say, in media or whatever, um, incorporating uh, the hotel company or the, any other hospitality brand into their lifestyle, it gives them incentive to want to adopt that similar lifestyle. Yeah. And um, hotel companies can do well to do so and make it seem more natural and more genuine. Right. I think it works well from a marketing standpoint. I think that it really helps get some buzz created around whatever your brand is. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think, and it's probably st statistically proven that people aren't going to Facebook to shop reviews for hotels. Right. I mean, maybe they're looking at like Google Plus or TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor, right, sure. But that's gonna be your your feed for where you're ultimately making your purchasing deci mm -hmm. decision. Not necessarily like, you know, how good someone's experience was on Facebook or on Snapchat or on Instagram, but a lot of times we're not turning to those channels to actually look and see what the actual product is. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was kind of getting to is social media, I think, as a whole, because, I mean, I'm in the marketing department for my company. It is, the, like, the last thing that, you know, our GMs and our operations teams are going to look at. Like, social media? They will pay, yeah, wow. they will pay for everything else, and then if there's money left, that's where we're going to put it in, like, social media advertising and stuff. And I don't know if it is a generational thing, if it is, yeah. you know, because that's, uh, that's the kind of leadership that we have. Um, as far as, you know, generation-wise, age-wise. Um, but where are they putting the marketing dollars then if it's not social media? At, like everywhere else. Like Just it's, traditional? I could go into it for like hours. Yeah, there's a lot of traditional. There's like e-channel, um, like e a lot of e-commerce advertising, yeah. like Expedia and right. um, other sites and um, email marketing. And there's a lot of more like grassroots stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's because like one, mostly they don't understand it, I would say. And then number two is it's really hard to tie an ROI to it. Mm -hmm. And that's hard to give because we're a management company and it's hard for us to prove to our ownership groups like, yeah, we spent this much money it's and so we cool. didn't, you know, we didn't book any direct rooms, but we had a lot of buzz and we had a lot of awareness. Yeah. So right. I think it works from a brand perspective. So like brand accounts that are on Instagram um, or like luxury hotels that are in destination markets, they do really well mm -hmm. on Instagram and Facebook, but it's a lot harder, I think, to push in um, like on the property level for tertiary markets, secondary and so Interesting. on. Interesting. Yeah, just to, just to add on to that, I think we sometimes forget how big this industry is mm -hmm. and the, the how a customer that's perhaps staying at a Motel 6 versus customer staying at the Four Seasons in Chicago or Toronto or New York, uh, what their expectation is. Uh, because, you know, if you're in a suburban market, like a secondary tertiary market, your strategy for your marketing dollars is going to be much different right. than 
um, your marketing strategy for Four Seasons or um, a JW in in an urban core market, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, I I would I would assume that that is more relative. The social media strategy is more relative, and there's more focus on it in, in the core primary markets mm -hmm. versus your asset or your portfolio being in a, in a tertiary market. Yeah. I would say that the way that we kind of handle that approach, I guess my experience with our hotels, particularly our hotels that aren't in you know these primary markets, um, I, I'm not sure if it's the leadership that we have, but sometimes we actually have to say, well, maybe this isn't the best strategy for you. They get really excited and they want to try everything new. They want every single, they're like, you know, we have, we don't have a, a marketing manager on property, but we want to do Snapchat and we want to do stories every single day. And we have to sometimes say, you know, as this type of hotel in this type of market, you're better served by focusing your efforts on this. And maybe right. for a lot of our smaller properties or who are in, you know, these different markets, it goes more back to the communication with the guest rather than posting these beautiful aspirational photos, it's how can we really use this to make the guests stay better. So information about things that are going on in the area and really becoming as connected with the community and the area around mm -hmm. them as possible um, tends to be the way to go. And it, and it also helps, I think, branded properties provide something that's a little bit more unique um, you know, when a lot of times guests are not expecting a personal or unique community touch. Yeah, so it's not a, it's not a one size fits all strategy. Right. right. Do you guys? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, that, that. I was gonna say, do you blend your personal, social media with your yes. professional? Is that is that frowned upon by your employer, or do they encourage it? My employer has a hashtag with Hyatt in it, so no, <laughs> use it. Use it. I mean, who's do, a better? Do they encourage that to be? Kind who's of a better a, brand ambassador than the employee? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Do most of you kind of you do blend blend them together or even keep keep them separate? Yeah, because I think as much as you're, you know, maybe taking away from the brand itself, you're you also have to brand yourself. Yeah. Um, like an, as we kind of all develop our careers, I guess my personal mindset is that you know you have to be, you know, looking ten, you know, fifteen years down the road, do I want to be you know the guy who has you know no exposure to the public or do I want to be the guy that you know is looked at as an industry expert mm -hmm. and able to advance my career that way yeah <clears throat> I think that the social media platforms are so diluted now with people just posting right. this that and the other that they're the brand you know the companies aren't looking at as much as maybe they used to mm -hmm. you know five years ago when we were entering the workforce yeah no it's amazing how it's changed because I remember in my company like whatever you I don't want to date myself, but you know, <laughs> even like eight years ago, we had bosses who were like, "You can't use mm -hmm. be on social media platforms at work." And now it's like, if you're not, then there's something you know wrong with you. Um, it, it, it's totally, it's totally flipped the script. And, and I think from an HR perspective, that's a metric that that employers are using to understand, um, you know, vetting out. Mm -hmm. The employees or prospect. Oh yeah, employee. for sure. Any employee I mean, that I mean, it's. A, I look at all your guys' Facebook pages yeah, before I came to this kind of, to this round table. And, and honestly, yeah. from a positive standpoint, like she said, I mean, if you if there is a, a level of kind of quasi professionalism with your personal accounts, um, I would I would argue that that would go a long way with your with your employer, right? Because then you believe in that, right? Your personal brand is a brand that you're working for on your, yeah. in the professional sense. I think it has to do a lot with the way millennials travel too, yeah. because often. When I'm traveling for work, I'm also traveling for pleasure. Yeah. So I do both when I travel, so why wouldn't I live both through social media? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't want to segregate. I you know, go to work Monday through Friday, and then I take a weekend trip here. It's, you, know, you tag them on, and right. I don't have two different social media accounts for my two different lifestyles. It's all just who yeah. I am. I guess I'll speak as, the, as an exception, I guess. Um, okay. But I tend to... Um, keep mine fairly separate. Um, I don't necessarily post anything that wouldn't be professional or that right. I would care about people seeing on my personal ones. Um, I guess from, I, I just prefer when I'm following my friends to just see what's going on in their lives. And when I you know, want to really focus on professional insights, that's what I, I guess maybe I'm, I'm more of a single focus kind of person. Do you use Twitter for like maybe one thing or does anyone use Twitter by the way, by the way? Am I the only one? See, that's, that's how old. Oh, you use Twitter. Okay, and you're the youngest person here. <laughs> 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 Go to show you. I mean, I guess I still really 
keep mostly LinkedIn as my focus for professional Me communication. Too. But, I, you know, I, at the same time, when I do travel for work, it's not that I avoid mentioning any, me you know, any aspect of right. work. It's just not really my focus. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I actually agree with you. Like, I have my LinkedIn for, you know, sharing um, industry articles and keeping in touch with old colleagues. Like, if someone leaves, um, leaves the company or whatever, like, I'm not going to add them on Facebook. I, right. just, I don't have that. I never have that relationship with them. So yeah. how else can I keep in touch with them kind of thing? Um, and then, I mean, I will still 